Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about senior software developers. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, do you think that an intermediate programmer can be, con be considered a senior developer? Yes. I do believe so. I would actually go as far as to, depending on your definition, say that that is definitely the case for many developers because the term senior is so loose. Uh, so for me, it's like in, what's the difference between an intermediary and a senior developer? It's very easy. A senior developer is someone who's lived for longer or done more stuff than the intermediate, uh, the mid-level software developer. Then. The reason why I think that that is the closest thing to the truth that you can say is because it is the way that the industry defines seniority. The industry defines seniority usually based on experience, years of experience and a certain level of proficiency up to a certain point. And the proficiency up to a certain point basically means that as long as you can produce consistent results within the different areas of responsibility that you might have as a software developer, you are considered senior because you know how to do this and you know how to do it so well enough that nobody really has to help you. But incidentally, that's also the level a uh, mid-level software developer is at usually. They don't okay, they might need some help still, but it's not that often, right? A senior is usually someone who's fairly independent or, you know, that sort of thing, right? And the beautiful part about that is that that leaves a little bit of room for interpretation because, I mean, I can solve my problem by if I'm a senior and the requirements is that I should have at least five years of experience and then sort of meet the expectations in terms of social graces and like some personal security, yada, yada, yada. And the... Uh, ability to work independently. Well, I met a few seniors in my day who actually can do all these things and the code turns into shit. Holy shit, it's bad. And then I have some seniors or like I meet some mid-level developers who are so good that they are basically an inspiration to me personally. And they everything they touch seems to become better. And you can argue that these these guys uh, and girls they are seniors too. Well, they are. It's just that they don't like. Like, how do you determine what's a mid-level and what's a senior? So for me, I, to give you an example of what I'm talking about, I have interviewed candidates who have between. Like, it's very rare that I find someone who is that good in less time than five years. It has happened on one or two occasions. I've like met some prodigies, but usually it's around five years where they start to become like what I call like true, true master level programmers. And then I've done interviews and worked with people who have over 20 years of uh, work experience. And the 20 years somethings in many cases, like I've met several, like a few of them are good like maybe one or two I've met that are at the same like master level that these uh, guys and girls that I met after five years uh, are but the 20 year somethings that are like they are embarrassing to talk to because they are senior to the point where it's like hard to imagine someone who has done this for longer I mean if you've been working in IT or as a software developer for 20 years then you've been you've been a part of the process for quite some time but they still can't even do things at a proficiency level that someone who takes a boot camp would be able to do. Like they are, uh, they are only senior in years, and I, it's always, I always find it so embarrassing. I don't really, I mean, I just think it's sad. I don't really emotionally feel much more anymore uh, when I do interviews with these sorts of candidates or when I work with them, because I kind of reached that point in my career now at the very least where I've realized that the best move for me is almost always to just keep calm and view the, the whatever's happening as just 
it's just another story card or it's just another bug or something like that. I don't emotionally attach myself. I don't put any expectations on people. In other words, if I do an interview with someone who has 20 years on CV and I realize that this person can barely produce anything, I don't really get upset with them. I don't blame them for it and so forth and so forth because I just view them as someone who, you know, I say like uh, you can't really fault someone for not knowing how good they how where they are on the scale if they've never had to work with people who are very high on that scale it's sort of I mean I mean uh, I honestly I think that this is uh, it would be a very interesting experiment to see what like, if the hiring process of the fan companies really is that enormously difficult or it's just that the people who say that it is that difficult are as I said these sorts of people where they think that just by learning how to write some basic code, yeah, that's all there is to it. And now uh, they're surprised that, holy shit, there's a bunch of stuff that I don't understand or know about because I know how to use WordPress, therefore I'm a programmer, right? Uh, anywho. So for me, I, I can promise you that there are so-called intermediary programmers who are like at the senior level because it comes down to a definition some of the strongest software developers i've ever worked with or as i said they haven't been working for more than maybe five years say five eight seven ish years something like that and i've met prodigy levels uh, software developers who are like they are literally a right out of uh, the university and they are so good at this thing that it takes them like a year of training to be better at that thing than most of the seniors. That's how good they are. And so it's really difficult to say like, where are you on the scale? But I can definitely promise you that there are like so-called mid-level developers who are, they are senior in every single way. Like uh, the only thing that they are lacking might be like, you know, years on the CV or something. But in terms of skill, they're so good that it's almost embarrassing that we don't see that when, and that really is down to, as I've said many times before, the problem is not that you're not good. The problem is that the people who are paying your salary has, they, most of them don't even know what a good software developer look, it looks like. That's why I always like it when the company understands that to figure out if someone's good, you have to have other good people, like other programmers to, in the in recruitment process. Because there are some people who are gifted to the point where like, I've met juniors who are, as I said, they're out of school and I can hear in the way that they think, in the way they reason and so forth, that if we give this person a little bit of investment, this person will be better than the entire army of seniors that you've already hired. I can promise you because I can see in, I see how they reason and like what level of intelligence they are at. And the same thing goes for the mid-levels and I, as I said, I can talk to a senior and know this person has been around they know their stuff or I can talk to them and just go yep this person is just getting by on the fact that they have uh, a person they have personal charisma they never have to work with anything that is outside of their comfort zone and uh, the company can't evaluate how good they are they are not worth the salary we're paying them not by a long shot so what I want you to take away from this is that yes mid-levels can definitely become seniors or be considered seniors because senior is a very loose term and it, it the best definition I can give you for, from the industry's perspective is usually you have around five years ish of work experience and you have the ability to work independently pretty much that is what it, the basics of being a senior in today's IT world if you want to be a really, in my opinion, a real senior. There's a lot more to it than that. And the only, but on the other hand, the only people who really understand that are the people who are really, really good themselves. Because the companies that do the best in IT are the companies who can tell good software practices and do good programmers from bad ones. You do not get to be the next Google, Facebook, whatever, whatever, if you just hire people who are subpar that's not going to happen and so by having an understanding of that that's usually the thing that's going to give you the best software developers but for the vast majority of you guys you don't have to think so much about it I can promise you because I know for a fact that there are people with 20 years of experience who are incompetent to the point where it's embarrassing 
and there are people who've been working for five years that are so good in some cases even a young a, earlier than that that are so good that e e with maybe a little bit of training or practically already so good that you could make them the head of the entire department and you would probably create a super company from the talent of these individuals or at the very least put them in a group together and just see them convert your entire company to one of the strongest powerhouses in IT. That's how good they are. Have a great day.